Alright boys, we are uh, reacting to Twitter's toxic relationship with movies. Yeah man, Star Wars, Star Not Twitter Wars. Twitter is lying to you, you about know. what people watch. And I'm gonna prove it to you. That's it. Wait, That's really? Tweet. Hello okay, internet, this welcome is to Film Theory, the show that won't what make people you pay watch $8 is for a fake blue check right? mark. Pop quiz theorists, what's the most watched show on television right now? Go on down um, to the comments. Make Watch, most watch Jeffrey Dahmer one. Jeffrey Dahmer one, right? Give yourself a guess. And when I reveal the answer, I've never, I've, I've, I've never seen it though. I've never, I've never seen it though. Later this episode, Jeffrey Dahmer go one. and give that comment and edit to let me know if you were right. No shame in wrong answers, by the way, because let me tell you, I did not know. If you had given me ten guesses, I would have never gotten it. I have never heard of this thing before. But no, that, 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 that's not a movie. That's a TV Apparently, show, right? It has yeah, sequels yeah. and spin-offs, and no one on the team has ever watched a fraction of a single episode. Anyway, Wait, I'll what? give you the answer later this episode because that's where the story ends. Here's okay. where it begins. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mighty. Did you guys see the new trailer for Avatar The Way of Water? I did, I, I, but I saw again, the new that's because it's my job to try and stay on top of these things. Without that, I honestly doubt I would have. I have not heard anyone talking about this movie online. And that- Oh yeah! Um, yeah, dude, nobody, nobody talked about it. Like, uh, have you seen anybody talk about it? I don't think, I don't think anybody has talked about this. Like, it's a, it's a sequel to Avatar, man. The highest grossing movie at one point. Immediately interested me considering that this is the sequel to literally the highest grossing film of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly my point, Matt Pat. years ago when it came out in 2009, Avatar was a huge deal. It was James Cameron's first movie since his previous highest grossing film of all time, Titanic. I'm the king of the world! Oh Ray! my god. I'm not the most what? humble guy, that one. <laughs> wonder if we could get him all to right. pay for a social media platform that's hemorrhaging money like an open wound. <laughs> anyway, Avatar was basically Pocahontas meets the blue man group in space. And yet, despite the only significant challenge to this film's status as highest grossing film of all time coming in the form of the biggest okay. crossover in cinematic history, I haven't seen choo, a choo. peep about its sequel over on Twitter. In fact, it's trended only twice this year, which is the same number of times that I've trended. And uh, not to undersell myself or anything, but let's, oh, let's be honest, I am brag. not the sequel to the biggest movie in history that made $2.9 billion at the box office. For content, Context, it'd only take about 14.6 avatars to pay for Twitter. A solid conversion rate, to be sure. And this sequel is coming out in December? Hold on, that soon? In Seriously, December? what is going on here? Dude. Because my analytics brain knew that Avatar did super well, the lack of Twitter chatter actually made me curious enough to look deeper yeah, into Twitter it. Twitter doesn't care about this, right? just don't care about this movie. But no, that doesn't seem to be the case at all. Avatar 2 has been tracking super well. According to the Quorum, a website that... So you're telling me... What's trending on Twitter is not actually trending in the real world? Mm. Else pre-release film data, The Way of Water has been tracking consistently high in awareness, interest, whether people will actually pay to see it, and if they'll see it in theaters. Basically, a ton of people already know about Avatar 2, and they're willing to pay to see it on the big screen. In fact, Avatar 2 has been ahead Today's of Black Panther like an echo Wakanda chamber, forever right? for the entirety of the Yellow year, Logan. only falling into second place the week that Black Panther 2 came out. All of this while marketing- Wait, Black Panther 2 came out?! <laughs> Jesus! For the movie has barely gotten beyond a trailer or two. Honestly, looking at these numbers had me baffled. Was the tracking data just wrong? Turns out, no. In truth, what goes viral online isn't necessarily what's actually popular. And the all worst right. culprit perpetuating all of this is Twitter. What's talked about ah. on Twitter is not reflective of what people are actually talking about out in the real world. If you actually look at the numbers, Twitter is borderline lying. What a surprise, man! Hmm. ...to you about what people actually care about in their TV and film media, <laughs> and I'm about to prove it to you. To start things off here, let's put some things in perspective. We forget okay. just how small a platform Twitter actually is. In 2022, it's estimated that Twitter has 396.5 million users. That's it?! If we're unrealistically generous to Twitter and assume that none of those are bots or people with multiple All accounts, right. that means that just about 5% of the world's population has a Twitter account. Dude. It's not too shabby, don't get me wrong, but for comparison's sake, let's just put that up against YouTube. YouTube has an estimated 2.6 billion- Bro! 
Yo, what not looking again, in that way? active users. And if we again assume that there are no bots or users with multiple accounts, that means that just under a third of the world's population. 2.6 billion people. And you found me. I love you. Now hit the subscribe button, alright? And remember, if you put a finger up someone's bum, your fingers are bound to smell. Population uses YouTube every month. Twitter's 396.5 million figure is their entire user base, not just the people who are using it at least once a month. And believe it or not, YouTube isn't even the biggest fish in the sea. Other social media is just as huge, if not bigger. TikTok has itself TikTok, an estimated TikTok, TikTok, how, how, how much does TikTok 1 have? billion monthly active users. Okay. Instagram has 1.4 billion. Facebook right. has an insane 2.9. Dude! Still? Billion. Heck, even Pinterest and Reddit are bigger than Twitter, with 480 million and 430 million monthly active users Man. respectively. What's more, a study from November of 2021 found that just 25% of Twitter's user base generates 97% of the website's content. That translates to fewer than 100 million people dictating almost all the conversation on Twitter. And those Jesus, voices are massively man. overrepresented by journalists and media personalities who use Twitter to source and break news. I mean, just how many articles have you seen claiming that people are furious about thing and then you click on it and all they're doing is citing random tweets from random accounts. No actual facts or trends or data, True. just the opinion of a very small slice of- So you're telling me Twitter cancel culture is not real? Damn, man. One or two random tweets. What's more, what users actually see on Twitter is very tailored to their own interests. Just like a yeah. lot of social media, Twitter's true. algorithms that create is true. echo chambers that, is that true. only show you the things that you actually like, isn't it with every, So while you might think that you're getting right? shown a bunch of new and different ideas and topics all the time, you're actually just getting fed things that Twitter thinks that you're going to like and follow. But like, First, how can there be 390 million people watching? Um, uh, like, like active on Twitter, if there are only 8 million people in the world, think about it. Example, if you're really into the MCU, you're going to get served a lot of MCU content in your browsing. And also yeah, a lot true. of Guilty Gear. Twitter really thinks I'm going to be into Guilty Gear for some reason. And the thing is, that vocal minority on Twitter is driving a lot of the decision making that's happening in and around Hollywood. Sometimes the changes are for the better. Like when Sonic the Hedgehog's design got completely overhauled thanks to the social media backlash against Ugly Sonic. But sometimes okay. they're for the worse. Like when Star Wars crumbled under the social media pressure brought upon by The Last Jedi, to make the confusing, unfocused, and apologetic mess that was the rise of Skywalker. I have never seen a single about the Star Wars. Inside the movies right? themselves that are being so affected really by know. online discourse, but what gets greenlit in the first place. The fantasy book series Aragon just got picked up by Disney, thanks specifically to a fandom surge on Twitter. Okay. Daredevil actor Charlie Cox has repeatedly said that the Save Daredevil Twitter campaign saved his career after corporate disagreement got the show canceled on Netflix. Morbius Damn. was re-released in theaters because clearly everyone meme and the thing on Twitter wanted a chance to morb all over the theater again. And yeah, of but course, it failed again, there's the right? Snyder Cut of Justice League, where heads of the company went on record to say, quote, since I got here 14 months ago, the chant to release the Snyder Cut has been a daily drumbeat in our offices and inboxes. Well, the fans have asked, and we are thrilled to finally deliver. The ironic part of all of that is in the aftermath that came out, the whole release the Snyder Cut campaign was likely driven by Snyder himself and an army of bots just to get fans riled up as an act of revenge against the Warner Brothers. Regardless, those right. are just a few examples of how this relatively small social media platform made up of a very vocal minority but it's like it's like it's like you know if if people are not saying it right but like they're in binaries right like two opinions they're like in binaries and shit right so even if people are not on twitter if you just tell them about it right you know there will be an opinion has historically had a huge sway in the entertainment industry. So but like it, it doesn't, it doesn't. Oh, with yeah, all it doesn't, that it doesn't mind, affect you want to everything. find out just how anything. skewed these results can get. We needed a way to compare what people were actually talking about on Twitter to what was actually being watched beyond the Twitter sphere. Now, okay. finding data about what's trending on Twitter is actually pretty easy. Several websites have archived that exact information by time and date. But finding exactly what to compare it against is kind of difficult. Can't exactly mm, just look at is. box office numbers it to is. gauge success anymore. Getting big bucks at theaters is great, don't get me wrong, it's just not the only metric that matters anymore. So mm. we turn to 
Parrot Analytics, a data company who made their name with a software that's able to track the true demand for movies, TV, and digital hey, but how do they, they do, do that? this by running a complex... Uh, momentum, uh, travelability, longevity, reach, retention, demand, affinity, Algorithm that takes a lot of variables into account. Okay. How many people watched, in what demographics, for how okay. long, how does okay. this product trend in search results, where does it huh. fall in the news cycle, even stuff choo, like choo. how much money are people willing to spend on this thing, and what is the tone of the search results and news coverage. Now, mm. that is a lot of data to throw into an alchemical analytics concoction, and some of it did make me squint my eyes suspiciously, but you know what? I think that it offers a valuable insight into what people are watching, and it can act as a kind of north star for our analysis here today. Looking at their top 10 list of most in-demand overall movie as of July 2022, the results were eye-opening, to put it mildly. Sure, okay. a lot of the list is what you'd expect. Spider-Man at the top? Absolutely yeah. expected. True, the Batman true. in the top 5? Sure, because true. Batman. But then he had some surprises. Venom, Let There Be Carnage... Er Wait, what is that? ...earned the number 2 most... What? You didn't even know about in this demand shit. spot. That tracks, considering it was the third highest grossing film of tw Wait. What? I didn't even know this existed. 2021. But the day it was released, Venom 2 trended for only 90 minutes. It only got itself ah. 11,850 tweets. Now compare that to the number one spot of Spider-Man. The day No Way Home released, Spider-Man trended with a maximum 398 thousand tweets. Its longest trend streak ran for seven and a half hours. Damn. Meanwhile, Marvel and Tom Holland were also breaking into the most trending tab with 182,000 and 131,500 tweets respectively. Venom 2 was a tenth of those. Damn. No one was talking about this thing over on Twitter, despite it being one of the most successful, highest earning movies of last year. Meanwhile, Zack Snyder's Justice League shows the exact opposite pattern. On the day it was announced, some variation of Snyder or Snyder Cut peaked on trending with 170,000 okay. tweets in a streak of seven hours. On the day it was okay. released, it peaked with 332,000 tweets and had an insane streak of 19 Nine hours. Uh, 19 I mean, that's hours. on par with Spider-Man numbers. And yet, despite yeah. all of this online chatter and this massive multi-month-long fan campaign, it was only watched by 2.2 million homes the first week, with reports noting that just 36% of people who watched it actually finished it finished it. the last one i'll call out for now is the eternals on the day of its release eternals trended on twitter with just over 99,000 tweets yeah. and a streak of four and a half hours not bad by any means but nowhere close to black widow which trended with nearly double the amount weed black oh my on god tweets, i 193,000 and a streak I think of seven everything and a half is hours to me. on its release date <laughs> and yet eternals managed to outperform its rival mcu release in all metrics in short twitter's trends just don't seem to consistently align with what people are actually watching what people actually care about which brings us back to the question that i started off with what is the actual biggest show on tv right now believe okay. it or not according to nielsen ratings the most watched show on television right now by a huge margin is this series called yellow Stone. It's a great what? Pretty drama about modern cowboys and rural ranch politics with lots and lots of fights. The report claims that 13% of all households watching TV while Yellowstone was on were watching the show. This translated to a staggering 9.3 million viewers during its season four finale. I don't even know what this is. In January of 2022. Literally the only thing that beats Yellowstone on broadcast TV is football. The uh, hand egg one, not the European football. Even more okay. incredible. The show doesn't even air on one of the mainstream channels like NBC or CBS. Instead, it's on the Paramount Network, which used Jeez. to be called Spike TV, home of CSI reruns and Deadliest Warrior. While digging into this data, at first I thought these viewership numbers had to be juiced in some way. The views yeah, coming out of TV had to ratings be. can sometimes be inflated. So I had like to TV, TV, nobody watches check TV. Myself. Right? But apparently the series and Damn. its creators have made so much this money this for making Paramount me question that they're going all in on the Yellowstone IP. It spun off into a prequel called 18. Which itself is getting a spin-off about the real-life Western hero Bass Reeves. It's also getting Is it any good? Should I watch it? A prequel sequel called 1923 starring Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren, and another contemporary spin-off called Four Sixes set in Texas instead Dude. of Montana. There's basically an entire Yellowstone cinematic universe, and no one on Team Theorist knew about this thing. Not My one. God. But you know who did know about it? Our parents, uh. people that aren't on Twitter. Yeah, one of our team members actually asked their mom if they watched Yellowstone and got this text message.
message back. Love it, cowboys are cute. Apparently everyone they knew would watch it and talk about it. Even the dogs would bark whenever a horse would show up on screen. Wait, should, and so, so, so what, it, what essentially is people living on the internet like in, uh, in a, like a, like in like a fucking another dimension or something. I'd expect, right? looking at Google Trends data, the show crushes. Not even Black Panther can catch it the week of its release. But now, look at the Twitter data from when that finale aired back in January. But like, I feel like most of the times, like, okay, so here's, here's how, here's my opinion on this, okay? Okay, let me, let me explain this to you guys, okay? Where's paint? We gotta have paint, okay? So, like, whatever is trending on Twitter, right? Whatever trends on Twitter, right? is based on like the conversation the con the, the conversation like whatever you know thing can generate most conversation right for example you watch like a plain cookie cutter thing right that does not have like a divisive thing in it right and then there's like a fucking movie that has like divisive like people at the, on the fence and they're like debates and shit going on and stuff. Of course, that will be more on Twitter because Twitter is essentially like a platform that is that that shows how many people want to have like a con. So if there is no, there are no opposing two point of views, right? For example, you, you you're talking about there's a movie called Banana, right? Like, you know, so banana is like, it's just fucking banana, right? Like, I don't know, like it's, yeah, there's no opinion on banana, right? But like, there's like opinion on black banana, right? Oh my God, why are, why do they have bananas that are black and stuff, right? Like, uh, and, and why not a white banana? Oh my God, oh my God, the thing is taking over the world. Oh my God, ha, huh? gotcha. Like all of this shit. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not surprising. January. Practically nothing. It barely broke into Twitter's trending list, maxing out at 13,000. So I, I, I think, I think he's missing the point hours. here. Basically, this was barely a blip on Twitter's radar. There seems to be this massive audience of apparent boomers and older Gen Xers. So it doesn't, it doesn't tell you what is trending in, in, in terms of what is more popular. It tells you, uh, trending in terms of what is the thing that people want to have a conversation about, right? Really yeah. underrepresented on Twitter, and therefore the resulting trends that people talk about on YouTube and Twitch and whatever. Really, this sort of silent majority when it comes to what people are actually consuming is fascinating. Probably deserves its own theory at some point. In short, as Twitter teeters on the verge it's of not, collapse it doesn't. right now, I wanted to make this episode to point out the echo chamber that it keeps a lot of its users in, and the false perception that it gives about the world of content around us. I think a lot of its users assumed that this was the new water cooler, the neutral place that would serve as an accurate representation representation of everything happening around us. A place where people would go and gather to chat about their favorite TV shows, movies, sports, politics, whatever. Like, you know, you, you don't want to just fucking chat about it, right? There has to be like an... Like, engagement is, you know, when there's like an opposing no, opinion. No, it is not that. It feeds you what it thinks you want to hear and prevents no, you from that's, learning that's about not... things that are important to the people around you. Sometimes those things are trivial, like a show about hunky cowboys. But oftentimes it's stuff that's a whole lot more important. And so, regardless of the platform's future, yeah. I warn you to not fall into the trap that the Disneys and Warner Brothers did, making decisions True. off a few tweets coming from a very vocal subset of the most extreme users. True, or worse, True. basing True. your opinions off an army of bots created exactly. by pocketed users with ulterior True. motives. True. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go see how Rip's sheriff investigation goes after his accident with those tourists. It's a Yellowstone thing. You wouldn't understand. Or maybe now you will. But hey, <laughs> that's, hey, that's, that's just, just a, a theory. theory. A film, a film theory. theory. And cut. cut. All right. That was, that was interesting. And subscribe, all right? Okay. Do it.